Hey guys, I'm Stephanie. I am a former preschool teacher and we're gonna talk horror stories. Being a preschool teacher is pretty rough. A lot of people think, oh, it's just kids and it's cute. There's a lot of bodily fluids. There's a lot of screaming, there's a lot of crying. Preschool can be a dream come true. It can also be somewhat of a nightmare. You never know what problems are gonna come up and it's usually what you don't think is going to be the worst case scenario that ends up being the worst case scenario. Sometimes preschools have twos programs, which means they're not potty trained, which means they wear diapers, which you would think could prevent any kind of bathroom catastrophes, that is an incorrect assumption because let me tell you, that will go everywhere, <laughs> including on you. We're in the middle of like cold and flu season. I've had sick kids in class before. Kids when they're snotting, they're, they're not like aware that they're snotting, you know? So they just kind of go up to you and they're like, Miss Emily, and it's just like, ugh. So, I am always like in your elbow, like wipe your nose, blow your nose. And I once had a girl who was kind of snotting and I kind of bent down to her level because like, she was like, I need a tissue. So I grabbed my tissue and I bent down. I was like, here's your tissue. And I was right in her face speaking to her when she sneezed in my mouth. <laughs> this one I was naive. No one had ever sneezed in my mouth and I couldn't like I couldn't like yell at her, like it's a sneeze, you know? Like so just, I took a minute to panic and think about like all the different bacteria that are now introduced to my system. And God, I don't remember what I did. I probably just like Listerine for days. I was a student teacher working in my center. We had gone through the day pretty normally. Like it was a pretty normal day. And then lunchtime came around and I'm walking around cleaning up after my lead teachers and such, and all of a sudden, one of them pukes. And we're just like, oh, okay. Cause you know, puke happens, it happens, you know? So we get that child cleaned up, sent home eventually. We think it's over. <laughs> Later in the day, I was cleaning our toys, sanitizing our toys, and then all of a sudden, another kid pukes. And we're like, oh no, oh gosh. So my lead teacher grabs her and holds her over a trash can. So cause she just keeps, Keeps vomiting, keeps vomiting, it keeps coming out. And I'm like, oh, okay. And then another kid starts puking while this one is puking. And we're like, oh God, oh God. So we're like trying to get them cleaned up, trying to get them over the trash cans before they get on everything. Cause then I have to sanitize it. It's the end of the day. So their parents are coming any minute. And so we're trying to get all of this situated. So finally they go home, me and my leader are like, oh my God, that was nuts. We think it's over. <laughs> Now you'd think I am old and wise, but no, I didn't learn. So I also then had, you know, I'm always very sympathetic when a kid was feeling sick and, you know, he was like telling me he was feeling sick. I was like, what's wrong? And he looked a little out of it. So I bent down, I'm, I'm short, but you always like bend down to the level of the child to really get them to talk to you. And he wasn't really talking. He was like, no, no. And I was like, Henry, like, what's wrong? What's going on? I thought he was being bullied. He's like, I don't want to talk about this. No, and I was like, come on. Like, no, no, I don't want to. And so I got really, really close to his face. And then he just looked up and projectile vomited all over me, like from this distance. It was maybe one of the worst days of my life. So finally they go home. Me and my leader are like, oh my God. That was nuts. We think it's over. About a week and a half later, it is not over. We have a staff meeting. We're all sitting. We have lots of pizza. It's a lot of fun. We're learning things. I'm walking back to my dorm and I'm just kind of like, wow, I ate a lot of pizza. My stomach just feels so full. And like, as I'm sitting in my dorm, this pizza just feels like it is not digesting. It's just sitting. Next thing I know, I'm like blanching. My face is just like, and I'm like, oh God, I'm gonna puke. And I, this is a dorm, so we have communal bathrooms. So I have to run down the hall, run down the hall, puke is getting everywhere. And I'm just like, oh my God, oh my God, I'm dying. And I'm like in the shower, the maintenance guy comes in, he's like, are you okay? And I'm like, not really, but I'll get there. And so then I'm like, I have a fever, I'm like shaking, I get back to my dorm and I'm like, oh. And I Google it and whatever those kids had, had an incubation period of about a week. And I was like, ah, so it's just now hitting me. So I call out of work only to find out that a few other teachers had also called out and we were all puking pizza everywhere. <laughs> that was the story of the puke apocalypse of my 
two-year-old classroom. For a few weeks, I was teaching one of my students just to kind of, we were tossing a ball back and forth and I was showing them how to, you know, lift it up in the air and catch it. Super simple stuff. One day we took a field trip, a, a little minor hike out into the woods and I watched as this same boy who'd been practicing throwing a ball up in the air, throw a rock up in the air and he watched it as it came all the way down and split open his forehead. Blood gushed everywhere. He was screaming, other kids were screaming, other kids were also worried that the blood was going to get on them. I definitely felt guilty for not teaching him how to catch the ball better and saying like, keep an eye on it. He took it all the way. So truly it's, it's my fault and I take full responsibility for it. I was subbing at a location I had never been to. And normally if you're the sub in a class, it's like guaranteed that you're just gonna be on bathroom duty the entire time. Life continued to uh, get worse when I discovered that I was assigned the only kid in the classroom that wasn't potty trained and wasn't wearing a diaper. Hashtag why. It was one of these parents that were adamant that their kid was potty trained, you know, insisted that like he had to learn the hard way when all that really happened was I had to learn the hard way that wearing a onesie and having a number two disaster, a bad day mix. We rushed him down the mountain, we got him some first aid. We checked in with our primary like nurse and they're like, I don't think you need stitches, but definitely need to call the parents. Parents came and I was really apologetic because I do feel like it was on my watch and it was through whatever training I had given him or not given him. But I was shocked that the parent was pretty nonchalant about it like stuff like this had apparently happened quite a bit to this student he was very accident prone and the fact that the parents didn't have to take the student to a nurse or a doctor or a hospital and get stitched up honestly it like it ranked low for them so for me i'm freaking out i don't know what to do they're like yeah we just call this tuesday in our household which Okay, great. And I really hope wherever you are, you are alive, kid. I really do. Once upon a time, it was a Tuesday. Got to work and a kid had brought in a book that was about, I don't know, some forest creature. You know how it goes. Anyway, at one point, Bambi style in the book, the uh, forest cute little creature's mother died. To which my students responded, what happened? Where'd the mom go? To which I said, dear God, kill me now. <laughs> then I too will be dead and have to avoid this question. It's pretty, pretty rough when you reach a moment in a child's life where you may or may not be the person to break to them that living comes to an end. I wasn't really prepared that day for like an existential crisis moment. I uh, basically, I sat down and looked those toddlers in their bright, innocent eyes and I was like, well, you know, sometimes in nature, <laughs> in the wild, animals exist. And then sometimes in the circle of life, you know, Lion King, and they're like, yeah! You know, in the circle of life, things happen. It's all, it's all just a process. It's all a cycle. And then luckily they're just, you know, their short attention spans kick into gear. And then they want to play with blocks and they've forgotten that they asked an incredibly unnerving question two minutes prior. All right, guys, I don't know what to tell you, but blood, sweat, tears, A, B, C, all of it coming together. Preschool can be absolutely crazy. So be nice to all the preschool teachers out there. They're doing the best they can to raise you. Now we, all, we know that we just need to wash our hands and sanitize as often as possible. Be nice to teachers, especially of young children, because they've probably been thrown up on more than once, because I know I'm not the only one. It's a roller coaster. You really have to be ready for anything to happen at any time of the day, so. But I survived. Yeah, so uh, you know, when you get hit with those hard-hitting questions that toddlers will volley into your court, um, just avoid them at all costs, that's what I would say. If you ever have a diaper catastrophe, just buckle up, get some wipes, and count your blessings. It's gonna be a rocky ride.